Hello, this is Yogeshwar 7000 again and I'm back on another interesting topic in Vedic Astrology today. And today we'll be talking about a very important uh, topic which is the placement of the planet Sun in the ninth house. Why it is important is because we know that the ninth house is the house of Father, it is the house of the Guru, it is the house of religion, your spiritual pursuits and pretty much, you know, it's a, it's a Dharma Trikona and uh, that makes it extremely extremely important so um, how does the planet uh, Sun behave in the ninth house or in other words what are the effects of the planet Sun in the ninth house in the natal chart we're not talking about Gochara or transits Gochara is a Sanskrit word for transit we're not talking about that so just open up your birth chart and see at the time of your birth if Sun was placed in the ninth house, what are the effects going to be? And of course, this is coming directly from the ancient scriptures. It's not a figment of imagination of any modern day astrologer. So what do the ancient scriptures say about the placement of Sun in the ninth house? So in case the Sun is in the ninth, uh, and that's a very, there's a general consensus on this, that the native, the person whose Sun is in the ninth house, will be a devotee of the planet Sun. Uh, or anything related to uh, Sun or its uh, its supreme deity which is the Gayatri goddess Gayatri is related to the planet Sun so uh, you will see that the person will be eventually if not in his early days but he eventually eventually is going to be attracted to Sun and will become the devotee of Sun and also it's also mentioned that he will be very religious minded and he will be devoted to other gods as well but mainly it's going to be sun that's what has been mentioned in the ancient scriptures however um, he may not be very religious minded although i mean that's a kind of contradictory statement that he may be devoted to the gods but may not be very religious minded and may not be very fortunate and uh, uh, it's very clearly mentioned that uh, that will be the situation in case Sun is placed in a zodiac sign which is not ruled by Sun or if Sun is not in its exaltation sign so as long as Sun is in its exaltation sign the results are going to be favorable so here they say that although he'll be devoted to Sun and other gods he may not be religious minded and may have a slight conflict with his father he'll be uh, not having a great relationship with his father but then everything changes in case Sun is in its own sign of Leo or it's exalted so all these effects uh, are going to be different he'll be extremely fortunate he will be very close to his father and uh, he will be very religious minded so just remember that Sun in the ninth house as long as it it's it's in its exaltation sign of Aries or if it's a note if it it's if it is in its own sign of uh, Leo then the results are going to be good and he'll be fortunate and he'll be blessed with good children and a good wife I don't know why most of the ancient scriptures keep talking about wife uh, meaning which they consider the chart or the analysis of a man and not of not of a woman so you will you will see in the ancient scriptures they do not talk about husband generally uh, they'll always talk about a wife and then uh, certain sages uh, have also mentioned in their scriptures about a different kind of an astrology which applies to women and we are not going to get into that discussion today uh, we'll just uh, assume that if it says the ancient scriptures say he'll be blessed with good wife and children as far as a man is concerned we'll assume that in case of a woman's chart uh, she will be blessed with a good husband and good children okay and in case the planet Sun is placed in its placed in its own sign and or exalted in the sign of Aries then the father of that person is going to be long-lived and he'll be very wealthy and he will take interest in religious activities and uh, will be we already discussed that will be devoted to the sun god and other gods as well uh, 
but in but in case be very careful in case Sun is positioned in its sign of debilitation we know that Sun gets debilitated in the zodiac sign of Libra look at the degrees as well because Sun gets deeply debilitated or exalted in a certain degree uh, or in an enemy sign or any case of a malefic sign or is aspected by a malefic or if it's conjunct with a malefic then there'll be a loss of father okay but as long as uh, it's placed in the zodiac sign of leo or in its exaltation sign then of course you know father is going to be long lived he himself is going to be wealthy he'll be very fortunate will be blessed with children and wife everything good will happen to him so watch out for this combination or in case it's also mentioned that in case sun may not be in its exaltation sign it may be in, in any other sign uh, other than its debilitation sign of course and it's aspected or has any kind of an association like a conjunction or an aspect or a parivartana with a benefic then the father will be long lived and he'll get all the good qualities of son being placed in the ninth house meaning which he'll be fortunate will have wife and children will be wealthy uh, so everything good will happen to him so good uh, so generally it's mentioned that son in the ninth house is not a good placement except when sun is in its zodiac sign in the zodiac sign of leo or in its exaltation or the third condition which they are mentioning here is that it is associ associated with a benefic uh, in any way uh, through an aspect or a conjunction okay so um, ninth house we know that it's a house of dharma and sun is a very sattvic planet and people are not familiar with what a sattva guna uh, what a rajas guna or what a tamas guna is please refer to my earlier videos sun will make the native religious minded but then watch out for sun in other zodiac signs other than leo or its exaltation sign or not being associated with a benefic then he may not be that religious minded and he may get into a conflict with his father or he may lose his father pretty young okay in case there's a malefic aspect or conjunction and uh, so everything uh, depends on you know if it's placed well or not if it's not placed well all the good uh, things are not going to be uh, coming in his life as far as son's placement in the ninth house is concerned okay it is ninth basically ninth house is a very powerful house so sun's placement in its own sign of leo also it's mentioned in the ancient scriptures that it's a very powerful raja yoga okay so all the good results of the ninth house are going to be magnified in case sun is placed in leo or in its exaltation sign very very powerful raja yoga okay so just uh, consider other other uh, other uh, influences of malefic planets or Sun being positioned in the enemy sign in the ninth house or having wrong conjunctions or malefic conjunctions or malefic malefic aspects then of course it's bad but as long as it's in Leo or exalt or it's exalted in Aries or has an association with a benefit then every good result is going to come in his life and he will experience a very powerful Raja Yoga however there are certain contradictory views of other astrologers also which I'll bring to your attention uh, like for example uh, Phala Deepika <clears throat> one of the ancient scriptures which is not too ancient but say about between a thousand and fifteen year fifteen hundred years old uh, is very clearly mentioning that uh, the father of that person is going to be short-lived and uh, the person is not going to get happiness from children uh, so he's saying mantreshwara of faladipka is saying that it's not going to be good now we know that over the ages certain scriptures or certain parts of the scriptures have been lost uh, because of certain influences you know there have been raiders who have destroyed libraries and you know ancient hindu scriptures so maybe you know this is just part of that astrologer's view that the father of the person is not going to be happy if son is placed in the ninth house or he may not be wealthy or may not may not have happiness from his own children 
maybe there is a possibility that he forgot to qualify that all these good effects are going to be felt in case sun is placed in the zodiac sign of leo which is its own sign or the exaltation sign of aries or has a benefic influence that that's a possibility but ancient scriptures very very clearly mention that which we just discussed uh, so there are a few contradictions here some of the recent scholars based on their experiences have mentioned that even though sun may be in its own sign it may not get uh, you know the person may not get good results as far as his fortune as far as his children as far as uh, you know his dharma as far as his father's concern but then you know there are different views and sometimes in astrology you know we have to absorb the contradictory views as, as well and look at our own experiences while analyzing birth charts so that's one the second thing is that just don't jump to a conclusion based on just one shloka or sutra you know other factors have to be taken into consideration because there are eight other planets and their placement may be good or bad in your birth chart so the net result or the net inference or a conclusion has to come based on the other planets as well and you know not just planets look at it from you know various views look at it from say parashara's traditional astrology or brigu's traditional astrology or brigu sutras or um the uh, the other texts like uh, say Germany he explains it differently you know because he bases his analysis based on Karaka so just don't jump to a conclusion uh, sometimes it's Nadi astrology Brigu's Nadi astrology also has to be taken into consideration so look at it from all views other planets influences as far as aspects and conjunctions degrees strengths and and then come to a final conclusion do not just jump to a conclusion based on one shloka which has been men mentioned in any kind of an ancient scriptures you know look at it in totality and then you probably will hit the bullseye well not bullseye because astrology is never 100 percent accurate but it's near accurate if you look at it from different angles and different views and put in your own uh, own experiences based on your analysis of charts so hopefully you enjoyed this video and in the meanwhile i will recommend subscribe to my channel and check out my website there is a link below and i will see you with an interesting topic in vedic astrology very soon goodbye